Hello, this is part number 69 of my preparation for NSE4 exam 49th. And let's talk about Fortinet logging workflow. What is the purpose of logs? To monitor network and internet traffic volumes, to diagnose problems. For example, we, I worked at the Network Operations Center and we used logs to find problems and their reasons. To establish normal baselines and to recognize anomalies and trends. We also were identifying the problems if the workflow of bandwidth utilization in some cases is over than 90%, then we were using that statistics to send that verification to another department which was de dealing with bandwidth in utilization. So purpose of logs could vary depends on your tasks and day-to-day -day, um, duties. And when traffic passes through 40 gate to your network, 40 gate scans this traffic and then 40 gate takes actions based on the firewall policies. This activity is recorded and the information is contained in a log message. The log message is stored in a log file. The log file is then stored on a device capable of storing logs such as a log server logs. Uh, FortiGate can store logs locally on its own disk space or FortiGate can send logs to an external storage device such as FortiAnalyzer. The purpose of logs is to help us to monitor our network traffic, locate problems, establish baselines, and more. Logs provide us with greater perspective of our network, allowing us to adjust our network security settings if necessary. Some organizations have legal requirements when it comes to logging. So it is important to be aware of the organization's policies during this configuration of the 40 gate device. For effective logging, our 40 gate system date and time should be accurate. We can either manually set system date and time or preferably configure 40 gate to keep its correct automatically by synchronizing with NTP server. NTP server is network time protocol server and NTP server is really highly recommended. What is logging workflow? First, traffic passes through FortiGate to your network. Second, FortiGate scans the traffic and takes action based on the configured firewall policies. Step 3. Activity is recorded and the information is contained in a log message. Step 4. Log message is stored on a log file on a device capable of storing logs. 
for example, local faulty gate device or an external device such as faulty analyzer. And reminder, NTP server is highly recommended. What are log types and log subtypes? Log types such as um, traffic logs, event logs, security logs. To FortiGate, there are three different types of logs. Traffic logs, event logs, and security logs. What are traffic subtypes? Forward, local, and sniffer. What are event subtypes? Endpoint, high availability, general system, user, router, VPN, SD, WAN, software defined, uh, defined wide area network, Wi-Fi, CIFS, security ratings, SDN connector, security logs, application control, antivirus, DNS query, domain name system query, file filter logs, web filter logs, intrusion prevention logs, anomaly, SSL secure socket layer logs for SSL VPN, for example, SSH logs, secure shell logs. Uh, so each type consists of these subtypes. Traffic logs record um, traffic flow information such as HTTP or HTTPS request and its response if there was any response. Traffic logs contain subtypes named forward, local, and sniffer. Forward traffic logs contain information about traffic that FortiGate either accepted or rejected, according to the firewall policy. Local traffic logs contain information about traffic directly to and from the FortiGate management IP addresses. Local traffic logs also include connections to the graphical user interface and FortiGuard queries. Uh, traffic log subtypes sniffer logs. Sniffer logs contain information related to the traffic seen by one arm sniffer. Event logs, system and administrative events such as adding or modifying a setting or daemon activities. It contains the subtypes uh, endpoint, high availability, and so on. System logs contain information related to operations such as automatic FortiGuard updates and graphical user interface logins. User logs contain login and logout events for firewall policies with user authentication, router, virtual private network, and wireless subtypes include logs for those features. For example, VPN, virtual private network, contain IPsec and SSL VPN log entries. It's event VPN, they are event logs. Finally, security logs record security events 
such as virus attacks and intrusion attempts. They contain log entries based on the security profile type. Log type equals UTM, Unified Threat Management, including the subtype, the, what I already, uh, subtypes which I mentioned. Log severity levels. There are eight types of levels. Level zero, emergency. Level one, alert. Level two, critical. Level three, error. Level four, warning. Level five, notification. Level six, information. Level seven, debug. Level 7 debug is really rarely used unless active, actively investigating an issue with Fortinet support. Description of levels. Emergency. System is unstable. Alert. Immediate action is required. Critical. Functionality affected. Level 3 error. Error exists that can affect functionality. Level 4 warning. Functionality could be affected. Level 5 notification. Information about normal events. Level 6 information general system information level 7 diagnostic information for investigating issues it's debug debug level includes diagnostic information into the event log the debug level is rarely used only if we are investigating uh, issue with Fortinet support and generally the lowest level we want to use is information but even this level generates many logs and it can cause premature hard disk failure depending on the type of the log and needs of our organizations we can uh, log only notification levels uh, of information or uh, higher. The organization policies should dictate what level of logging must be used, what should we log and what we should not log. Log message layout. Logs contain log header. It's similar to all logs. First it says type and subtype, uh, name of log file and level. What is severity level? Those people who work in network operation centers, they First, use this category level of log message so they can decide um, what uh, action is required and how fast we should react to this message. Uh, every log message has standard layout. So first part is header and second part of it is body. The header contains fields that are common to all log types, such as originating date and time, log identifier, log category, severity level, and virtual domain, VDOM. 
The value of each field, however, is specific to the log message. In the row log entry example, uh, the subtype is, for example, web filter type UTM, so it means Unified Threat Management. So it means it is a security log and let's say subtype is web filter and log level is warning. Uh, the type and subtype of logs determine what fields appear in the log body. The body describes the reason why the log was created and the actions taken by FortiGate. These fields vary by log type. In the example, for example, these fields are as follows. Policy ID field indicates which firewall rule matched the traffic. The SRC IP, source IP field indicates the source IP address. DST, destination IP field indicates the destination IP address. The action field indicates what FortiGate did when it found a policy that matched the traffic. The MSG field indicates the reason for the action taken. For example, action was blocked and it means that FortiGate prevented this IP packet from passing. And the reason is because it belonged to a denied category in the firewall policy. If we log to a third party device, such as syslog server, knowing the log structure is crucial to integration. For information on log structure, for FortiGate and associated meanings, it is advised to go to docs.fortinet.com and study its documentation. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video where we will talk about effect of logging on performance. Thank you for watching.